If you get distracted, you get slapped. I wish that was a service I could pay for. Because lately, I've been really disappointed with myself. I have all these goals and dreams, but then I keep sabotaging myself with all these dumb distractions. And I'm so sick of always feeling like I could be doing more. So for 30 days, I did something that changed everything. But first, a quick warning. After watching this video, you're gonna make some drastic changes in your life. I cut out all temptations for 30 days and followed an insane routine of 10 daily commitments to build monk-like discipline. I slept very badly. I'm scared, I'm worried, I'm also excited, and I know I'm gonna come out being a different man. Starting the day with no snoozing, putting the phone away, meditating, a cold shower, no social media distraction, eat from 1 to 6 p.m., no cheat meals, one hour of podcasts a day, tell my grandma I love her, that was a joke, ha 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 ha, although I should, work out three times a week, no flippy floppy to bing bong, if you know what I mean, and at 9 p.m., wind down. Today was uh, very hard, just felt isolated. Being busy all day, but not getting anything done really. I'm hoping things get better. Haven't you ever wondered, what could your life look like if you actually did all the things you said you were gonna do? So I asked three of my friends to join me on this challenge, but this is where it gets interesting. If you mess up once, you have to donate $300 to something you hate. I guess probably the KKK, you know? That. <laughs> Let's burn it. That actually hurts. Maybe maybe Putin or- Dang, you, you, you can't fail. I can't. What do you donate? To. The worst organization of all, the German tax authorities. What I'm curious about is like, what's your intention for doing this yourself? I've just fallen off, wasting my life and potential. And it's just like, because I'm not spending it on the things that I actually want to do. It's just the, the lower part of myself, the, you know, the addictive part, the one that wants to distract itself and yeah, just escape. What are you escaping from? These first few days have been really challenging. And it's probably because I have been going through a breakup. It was a beautiful time and uh, now that's transitioning out. I think something that I would caution because of what you just shared is like, don't let the discipline become another distraction or a way to not feel. It's called compassion. This is not an excuse though. I think I picked the right time to test my discipline and self-control. Dude, the first day of my challenge, it's been really amazing. Good for him. After a few days, I moved in with a friend of mine and his place was on another level. <laughs> Get it? Because it's on a nut, the. I felt elevated. <laughs> Watching the sunset from my downtown apartment. Now, when I cooked beef, the stakes were even higher. Okay, I'll stop. The building even had its own gym. It's like the pool area over there. Only attractive people and me. And I was building some momentum. But there was a big problem. Things got too easy. But I wanted to prove to myself again that I can do really hard things and conquer that in a weekly. So every week I added a mental toughness challenge. And the first one is facing the biggest fear of all humans, which is doing nothing. Today, I'm gonna be meditating five hours straight. How's it going, boys? Hopefully none of you messed up. I've been like crazy productive because I don't have a phone. I feel much more calm, much more present, and significantly more happier. I'm feeling focused and relaxed. Before entering this challenge, I literally had my first panic attack. I woke up in the middle of the night and I felt like I was like, I have a heart attack. And here's the question that I gotta ask. Did anybody f up? <laughs> <laughs> Duck Kyle, what? I had one of my habits was to wake up and, and go to bed at the same time. I have an eat, sleep, cooling mattress and has a built-in alarm system. But on the weekends, I had a different schedule. Otherwise, I would have been up, but... So I think we got to vote. I think it's fine. I think it's totally fine. Like, so that you just like didn't feel like it. it sounds like it was an accident. Pass. <laughs> but moving forward, we weren't going to make excuses. And although I ticked off every single thing, I wasn't really happy with myself yet. The workouts could have been harder. The cold showers could have been longer. I mean, I think with all these discipline things, it's like, it's not about like the militant adherence to what you said. It's Even though you're beating yourself up about it a little bit, Leon, when you just track the trajectory over a longer period of time and you can relax a little bit into your routines and into your habits. So for week two, I decided to take the intensity up a notch. Headed upstairs for a cold morning swim. Mm. Every day the same one. Tonight, I'm reading. Mm. It's crazy how boring it gets. Long days, full calendars. Normally, if I was still in a relationship, I would watch Netflix and calm down, and which is good too. 
But without all these distractions and temptations that are not in my life, I have so much more time to work because it's the only thing I can do that's fun. Every week, I want to do another challenge. Last time, I did 5,000 meditation. <laughs> and this week, I want to do 1,000 push-ups in a day. Only 940 to go. I have a full day of editing with a tight deadline. Okay, if I do 1,000, I'll be busy until 8 p.m. What I do miss is just something where I can shut my brain off. Just a little bit of an escape. I like to escape. That's why I love sci-fi movies, fantasy movies, where you're just in a completely different world that doesn't exist. As a kid growing up, there was a lot of conflict. There were a lot of fights in the family, a lot of instability. And that's when I got into reading Harry Potter. And oftentimes you love a movie because you identify with their character. And Harry has this turbulent life. And then all of a sudden he gets a magic letter. He gets sucked into this completely different world. He can literally escape reality. And there's things like friendships and adventure and a meaning to this all. While all the drama was going on in my family, I could just lock myself in my room and read Harry Potter. And I could just leave everything behind. And that's why part of me loves to escape. But now there is no escape other than maybe work. That's a thousand. What a stressful day, honestly. I had four hours of sleep after the thousand push-ups, editing all day, and I still didn't get it fully done. I even canceled a trip that I had planned with my friends, which I said I was gonna go to, and I keep canceling because of work. Today's Sunday, another video I gotta shoot. No weekend, again. I'm in a zone like I haven't been in a long time. The week's been going good. I will probably keep using this for at least 90 days. Man, like I really feel like really empty. I've been in a, a pattern of avoidance for like a long time and some of these things are some pretty dramatic stuff. I find it also curious how these simple little things that we've decided are important to us and how it can be a challenge to do them. Why do we put off the things that we know are best for us? That's the question that got me into doing this challenge. Why, as humans, does it often feel like we're at war with ourselves? It's just this little nagging part of my personality that desires it to happen now. You know, it's like a little kid. I have that part too. For me, it's the one wanting to escape. Don't you also have a part of you that keeps you stuck? For some, it's the inner wimp that chickens out whenever things get challenging. For others, it might be the jealous part that keeps ruining every relationship. Or it's the inner critic. And how do we actually win this battle against them? I'm not sure what challenges I want to do. Maybe you guys have some ideas. I have a suggestion, which you're probably not going to like, but what if you had to take two days off in the middle of the week? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's the real challenge. I was going to say the same exact thing, bro. Well, what do like, I do? Like, this is actually the real discipline is like taking care of yourself. Let me think of... Uh... The reason why you can't is the reason why you must. Maybe the guys are right. Part of me is saying, hey, this is... 30 days of discipline and taking time off. That's the exact opposite. What are you doing? You're chickening out. And then there's a part of me that's like, these guys have a point. There's an internal conflict that I have. The day that I've been dreading the most, more than the five hour meditation day. I invite you to sit in a comfortable position. What am I gonna do for the rest of the day? What do normal people do? It wasn't easy not being productive. So I made a to-do list of three things for my self-care routine. And the first one is cooking something fancy, which in my opinion is a waste of time. What's good? How are we doing? We're gonna cook something really fancy. I think it's great. I think you need that. Asparagus, potatoes, salmon. It has to be really, I wanna do a really good job with this. Oh no. How's it uh, going so far? I think I have a real problem with social media. I'm not gonna go on social media until four o'clock. When four o'clock comes around, I get on and then six Ryan Trahan videos later and it's like nine o'clock at night and I'm just like, dude, what just happened? So I, I set up the system where there's a time thing and I, I'm giving the password to someone else. So I can't, I can't, I will, I will not be able to do it. And this is just what has to happen, I think. Secondly, I, uh, it, it, it was time for a haircut. They look cool? Yeah, you're so cool, dude. And number three, I got really creative. So I asked myself, what could be the most unproductive, rejuvenating hobby, maybe taught by somebody the exact opposite of me? And there was only one option, painting with Bob Ross. Ah, uh, hey, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I go right into a small amount of the Indian yellow. Just make little, little crisscross strokes, something like that. Ah, it already sucks. Just let it play and bounce. It doesn't look like his. I can't wait to see the before and after. I really wanted to like it, but... I just want to sort of dance this around a little bit. 
big old cloud. It just sort of floats around, has a good time all day. I've always had this all or nothing thinking. What am I doing wrong? Like I can't do something and not try to be really, really good at it. You know, clouds are one of the freest things in nature, I believe. Just let them go. It's this need to control, to have a grip on things. So let them have fun wherever you want them. Let them go. Without this, I don't know if I would have been able to build my first e-commerce business. I don't know if I could have built this YouTube channel. But all this also comes with a huge price. And I'm starting to think that maybe I'm overpaying a little. What if the real flaw wasn't that I wasn't disciplined enough? I've certainly enjoyed our time together. I'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless, my friend. Yeah, that's really good. You did the sunset well. It's just the clouds need some attention. How have you been going? Probably the best of the last three weeks as far as uh, how how I feel. I read 13 books in this 30 day period, which is like wild. I'm actually a lot better than I was last week. What made the difference for you, Kyle, this week? I allowed myself to feel really bad. Like actually seeing that part of yourself that's victimized, that feels disempowered, and not just trying to bypass that part of yourself. We have all these different versions of ourselves, I feel like, that make us who we are, and they're equal parts to some degree. What was your big discovery this week? I don't know. I think one of the fears is what if I just go for full enjoyment all the way through? Would I lose my ambition and my drive? What would happen if you lost your ambition? Just, I, I wouldn't know what's left of me. For the rest of the challenge, the next five days, I'm not gonna be eating anything. Nothing. That was the last food for the next five days. I think it's gonna be really challenging. I have to do all these other commitments on top of that. I feel like it's extra cold when you're fasted. I can definitely feel the hunger setting in. You want some sweet potatoes? They have free hats here, it's pretty sick. The mac and cheese is... No. Mm. What you doing, huh? Cooking some beef. Well, you. Yeah. I don't want to tell you how good it is. You know what I have? Germany water, so it's like not fun. What you got now? Venison. Good for you then. I feel like there's a big hole in my stomach. I think I'm halfway through the fast now. I feel really weak and dizzy. As always, everything was ticked off without miss. My productivity and focus were like night and day compared to when I started. The last check-in call is supposed to be today. I totally forgot. That was so cheesy, dude. <laughs> For the final checkup, look who I brought in person! Hey. Even Raph is here from Australia. What do you got to say? Yeah. And with only three days left, with this final conversation, everything changed and went into a direction I didn't expect. I had kept all my commitments so far, but I still felt like I did in the beginning, like I should be doing more. I think there's a common thread amongst ambitious people because their standards are so high. So is that the conclusion? It'll always be like this? Even after 30 days of cutting out every temptation and focusing all in on work, it'll always be a battle against yourself? Where do you feel like this stems from? I didn't have an answer. There's a book called No Bad Parts, which my therapist recommended. It's really good. This book was the answer to all this self-sabotage I had been struggling with. And if it clicks for you, your life will change. No Bad Parts by Dr. Richard Schwartz explains that we naturally have multiple parts or sub-personalities, almost like having multiple personality disorder. You might have an achiever, a rebellious one, an avoidant one, or maybe even a self-harming one, and they all want different things, which is why we're sometimes at war with ourselves. It seems like I scripted this from the beginning, because that's how we kept describing it all this time. Part of me is saying, hey, this is 30 days of discipline. And then there's a part of me that's like, these guys have a point. Now here's some bad news. I wanted to get rid of that part that kept holding me back. The lower part of myself, the, you know, the addictive part, the one that wants to distract itself and yeah, just escape. But the more we try to suppress it, the more it'll fight back. I think this part of myself that I've suppressed is this inner child that likes to play, that likes to be silly, that at some point was overpowered by the drill sergeant because it had to be done in order to be protected. So they all serve an important purpose. When you experience a trauma, that's when a new part emerges to protect you from that trauma. And that drill sergeant probably came in at some point during my life because it had to protect little Leon, who maybe at the time thought he wouldn't be loved, he wouldn't be safe if he wasn't disciplined, if he wasn't Why have not I done this earlier? That's the inner critic. Because <laughs> you didn't know any better. It's fine, you're doing it now. 
doing great. <laughs> And somebody's cutting onions here. What's the part that you have been trying to suppress? Do you feel that part right now? What if, just for a moment, you didn't shame it for existing, but you just listen to that part and ask them, what's your story? Why do you exist? What do you need? Every part serves its purpose. There are no bad parts. That's the last day. <laughs> and with that, the most productive 30 days of this year came to an end. And what I learned is this, everything you hate about yourself is just a part that loves you and wants to protect you. Even a self-harming one just wants the physical pain to protect you from unbearable emotional pain. And if you just took the time to listen to it and love it back, it might become your greatest gift. These 30 days were a great learning experience. I encourage you to try it out for yourself. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.